the main things you've had to change moving in your striking, moving from a ring to a cage? Not much really, but one thing I did I did notice was um my my striking my striking was a uh, better suited for MMA. I always knew that for for, for little gloves and, uh, a lot, you know. Um, but the way I fight, I've always fought. I, it hasn't really changed too much from kickboxing to MMA. It's just helped me a lot more, to be honest. And uh, this is a question directly from John Danaher. Do you have any? Because hey. he. He follows. He follows not just jiu-jitsu, but he studies all martial arts. Um, do you have any striking role models that you looked up to when you were coming up? Uh, Anderson Silva was the one for me because um, he was the one that made me really feel like I could do this. Like I could really be be like a, a like I felt from I think it was UFC 90. That was the one I first saw him live on pay per view, and I was like, yo. I couldn't really do this shit. What was it like having to fight Anderson? Because, like, if you hear George talk about his fight with Matt Hughes, he, like, couldn't even look him in the eyes, and he was terrified of him. Was that something that was, like, different mentally going into the fight with him? Nah, not really. For me, I was I was really trying to fuck him up. Yeah, with, with Anderson, it wasn't really, um... I wasn't trying to, like... like I know George said that with Matt Hughes in the beginning. He was kind of, like, looking down. I remember he was wearing white trunks. He was looking down, then looking in the eye. And he got subbed, but in the in the rematch, he just fucked him up. I didn't want that for myself, and I knew that was the case because I remember the first time I met Anderson. The first time I met him, he was um very soft spoken. You kind of have this too, because your voice does not match your body, like legit. Yeah. Your voice. I sound like <laughs> when a twelve-year-old. I first heard you talk, did you hear yeah, what I, I said? Sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sound like a twelve-year-old, and I'm just like a huge white dude. Big white jack dude, motherfucker. So, <laughs> so when the first time I met y'all, you're like, hey man, I'm like, oh shit. And that with Anderson, it lures people into a false sense of security. That like, it lures that like you know Anderson. Oh hey guys, it's the great show. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna do the show for the fans. But when you get in that cage with him and you're across the, then you're like, who is this beast? Where was that soft spoken, friendly guy I was talking to at the weigh-ins? And that's why for me, even at the weigh-ins when he was crying, I didn't buy into it. I was just like, nah, I can't fall for any of that because this is a spider and you're you're, you're gonna you're gonna be tangling in his web. Are you gonna get caught in the web, or you're gonna you're gonna weave your own and trap him? So I'd have to answer for myself, maybe on my deathbed. Like, well, I don't think I was holding back on him because I rocked him in the first round and I was really trying to fuck him up. I was trying to finish him, but I was trying to be smart about it. But I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't holding back on him like people were saying. Sure, everyone wants to hear this. I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but how real is the beef with uh, John Jones? Oh, very real, very real. I, man, Gordon, you, I'm not in this game. We are, we don't have fear. Like, or fear is, Welcome to fear is like a, a concept. It's something that's been made up. Danger is real. John's a dangerous man, but so am I. You know, so am I. And there's, there's a lot of things. I said this before the fight with uh, with uh, Santos. I said he's not the same ever since the whole USADA thing, ever since, you know, he became a clean athlete or whatever, stopped, you know, grabbing hookers by the pussy and shit. He changed. And also, he's been in the game a long time. He he came in, became the youngest champion, did all this crazy shit. And he's a great fighter. That's the thing. But then he made the mistake of talking about me on TMZ. And then I responded. And then eventually I realized, oh, because he's a fan. He loves everything I do. He, he, he copies some of the shit I do because he wishes he was in the position I'm in. And I'm not saying that he wishes he was me. Well, he wishes his career went as smoothly as mine has so far. Under two years in the, in, the, in the company, and I became the champion, and I'm the new like hot, you know, commodity in this, in this game, you know. And he's envious. Like I said, I'm the freshman. He's a senior, and he sees this guy, you know, young black kid coming up and doing everything he wished he could have done. I fuck up on like you know on my own basis, but I'm just smart about my fuck ups, and I made my mistakes outside the UFC. And he's dumb enough to keep making the same goddamn mistakes. Six days before his last arrest, he's tweeting. Stay home, guys. Everyone obey the law. And then what happens? He's outside his favorite strip club with a fucking, I don't know, 22 or whatever. And, yeah, a bottle of tequila, I think it was. You know, I went through my own phase. I mean, like, everyone has, I don't know, we all have our own personal lives. I'm sure we all have our own problems, but we deal with it accordingly. I just don't fire up this fucking beast and go for a drive because I feel some type of way. Now, if you guys were in a fight, would you want to fight him at a catchweight? Because what do you walk around that? Would you want to fight him at a catchweight, or would you want I to just go I walk around 207, 208. I, I want it to. I want it at 205. I, want, I hope he keeps the belt. Because I really want to fight him after the the row of murderers I have at middleweight. 
I have to respect the game. The, the, you know, I have to respect the game. I'm not going to be one of these guys who just money fight this, money fight that. That's not how you have a long lasting legacy. Has he even? He's been in this fucking company over ten years. He's never moved up in weight. So why would you expect that from someone when you can't even do it yourself? So for me, I've stated the date, 2021 July. I'm gonna fuck this dude up. In time, he's gonna get it. <laughs> oh man, if you're ever in New Zealand, I gotta take you for a ride in this thing, man. It's great. Yeah. It is. It is next my level. Friend, my friend, what what model is that one? 720s. My my friend has that exact car. That's a it's yeah, insane. Uh, yeah, fuck, it's fun. It's really fun. And I got to let him drive it because I'm doing this interview. But, like, when you... Wait, wait. Ah! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. 